Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an equation using Vieta's theorem. Let's go ahead and get started. So at this point you can pause the video and try the problem yourself first. Okay, the roots of x cubed minus 29 x squared plus 244 x minus 576 equals 0 are p, q and r. The square root of p plus the square root of q and plus the square root of r is what we're supposed to find. So, by using Vieta's theorem, we're able to write p, p plus q plus r, which is equal to 29 from negative b over a. And then we can write pq plus pr plus qr, which is from c over a, 244. And finally, the product, we can write it as uh, at negative b over a, c over a, and negative d over a. So that will be 576. Okay, so those are the relationships that we have, but we're supposed to find the sum of the square roots of PQR. So we're going to try to get that. So let's go ahead and give it a name first. Uh, since that's going to be the sum of the square roots, I can call that an, let's call that S. So our goal is to find S basically at the end. So how can I find um, the expression if it has a lot of radicals? Uh, the you know, general idea is square both sides. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll be squaring both sides here. That's going to give me from a plus b plus c quantity squared, as you know, I'll be getting p plus q plus r plus two times the quantity. So I'm going to be multiplying these pairwise. And since they're both radicals, uh, I can just write them under the same square root like this and then like that. And then finally like this, okay? So basically this is equal to S squared and S, S is what I'm trying to find. So if I can find the answer, I can just go ahead and uh, square root at the end. But here's the thing, we were trying to find the sum of the square roots, but we came across another expression which we have to find. So the next question is then how do we find this sum? And we have to call that something. So let's go, go ahead and call that T for total. So what I have is the square root of PQ plus the square root of PR plus the square root of QR, which is equal to T in this case. And again, we're going to be using the same type of, type of strategy here, square both sides. Let's see what happens. So by using the same formula, again, I'm going to be getting PQ plus PR plus QR plus two times the pairwise multiplication. Now, when I multiply these two terms, the first and the second, the square root of p multiplied by the square root of p is going to give me a p. So I can write it as p times the square root of qr. And then I'm going to multiply the first and the third. That should give me q times the square root of pr. And finally, I should be getting r times the square root of pq. So you see the symmetry here. All right. And this is going to equal t squared. That's what we named it. Okay. Now, let's see what, what happens now. Uh, we called the first sum S, and then we came up with another sum, which we call T. Now, we have an expression for T squared. So if we can calculate this, then we're able to find T and then hopefully go to S from there. But how do you find this one? Let's simplify this a little bit. Uh, obviously, we can factor the expression inside the parentheses the greatest common factor being the square root of pqr. So we can take that out. And once we take that out, something interesting happens here. We get the square root of p plus the square root of q plus the square root of r, and that equals t squared, okay? Because this uh, expression, we're basically taking out the square root of p, so we end up with the square root of p inside and the qr are already outside. So basically, that's what we get, okay? Well, isn't that kind of interesting? Because we started with something that we call S, and then it came up again, right? So this is equal to S. Well, now we have two equations, one for S squared and one for T squared. So let's go ahead and try to simplify those expressions, of course, using what we have. We know that P, uh, P plus Q plus R is equal to 29. So let's go ahead and substitute that here. 29, so I'm working on this equation now, plus, now I, I know that that's equal to 29, 
but the parentheses, the expression inside the parentheses is equal to t, so I'm just going to call that t, right? And that's equal to s squared. So that's my first equation. And my second equation is right here in the simplest form. And we know that pq plus pr plus qr is 244 from here, from Vieta's theorem. And then plus, I have the 2 times the square root of pqr. Now the pqr is equal to 576. So the square root of pqr is going to be the square root of 576, which happens to be 24. That's kind of nice because it's an integer. So I'm going to replace that with 24 here, but I have to multiply it by 2. So how about writing in 48 here and then s. So this is 2 times 24, which is 48, multiplied by s. And this whole expression is equal to t squared from here. Okay. So I came up with a system of two equations, but unfortunately, it's not a linear system. That would be nice, but no luck here. So what do we do? Well, since it's not linear, we can't really use elimination here, but uh, we can use substitution. And what's our goal? So let's go back to the original problem. We're trying to find S. So I think I should uh, substitute uh, something for s. So I should isolate t from one of these equations. Obviously, you don't want to isolate the t here because you're going to get a radical and some plus minus stuff. But if you use the first equation to isolate t, that would make more sense because it's easier. So let's go ahead and isolate t here. So subtract 29 from the s squared. So if I write it this way, it's going to make more sense. So let's write it this way. Subtract 29 and divide by 2. So you'll be getting s squared minus 29 divided by 2. So that's equal to t. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that here in the second equation. And let's see what we get from there. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. So 244 plus 48s is equal to t squared. And t happens to be s squared minus 29 divided by 2. So I just got to square this whole thing. Okay. All right. So, so what we're going to do here is basically uh, what we need to do is we're going to need to simplify this equation. Uh, and then we're going to be getting an equation from here, right? Okay. But what kind of equation are we going to be getting from here? First of all, we kind of need to think about this, right? What kind of equation are we going to be getting? Okay. So, uh, well, since we're going to square s squared, it's going to be s to the fourth power. So we're getting a quartic equation, which is not very easy to solve. But uh, you're going to notice that uh, there's going to be some ways to solve it. So, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we're going to, next thing we're going to do is simplify this equation. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep the left hand side as is. And then square the numerator which should give me s to the fourth power minus 58 s squared plus 29 squared, which happens to be 841 and that divided by four. Okay. So what I need to do is I just need to cross multiply and I'm going to be getting s to the fourth minus 58 s squared plus 849. I'm sorry, 841 is equal to four times this expression and four times that expression is going to give me 192 s plus 244 multiplied by four is going to be uh, nine, one, 1016. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and let's see what we're going to get from here. We should be getting a nice equation. Let's see what we get s to the fourth power minus 58s squared. So I can go ahead and subtract this to put it in the standard form. And then now I have two constants here. So if you subtract 841 minus 1016, you should be getting negative 135. And that should equal zero. Okay. So that's my cortic and I'm supposed to solve this. And remember, our goal is to find s. So once we solve this equation, where we'll actually get the answer. So the million dollar question here is how do you solve this equation, right? Okay. So 
First of all, notice that the S cube term is missing. So we don't have that, which is good because this is kind of like a reduced uh, cortic. So if you were to use a formula, definitely you could use that. But formula for the cortic equation is quite complicated. And even the Cardano's formula for cubic equations are complicated. So that's not what we're going to do. We're going to look for integer or rational solutions. Okay, since the coefficient of s to the fourth is one, we're guessing that there's going to be some integer solution, hopefully, to this problem. Okay, all right, let's see. And how do you find that? Uh, again, uh, by using uh, factor theorem and divisibility rules, we know that if we have an integer solution, it needs to divide 135. So we're basically going to be checking the uh, divisors or factors of 135. And one of the things that's kind of interesting with polynomial equations is that sometimes solutions can be real obvious. For example, what is the very first thing you should be checking in a polynomial equation if you suspect there are integer solutions? You would be checking for s equals 1 or s equals negative 1. Now, when is 1 a solution? Well, if the sum of the coefficients is 0, that means s equals 1 is a solution. Here, that's not the case, because if you plug in 1 for s, it's not going to work. Okay, when is s equals negative 1 a solution? When the sum of the coefficients of the even power terms equals the sum of the coefficients of the odd power terms. Now, we only have one term with an odd power here, which is s to the power 1, and that will be negative 192. And the evens are going to be 1 here, negative 58 and negative 135. If you go ahead and add those numbers, 1 plus negative 58 plus negative 135, you're going to notice that they actually equal negative 192, okay? Which is nice because that shows that s equals negative 1 is a solution to this equation. So what is so good about it that s equals negative 1 is a solution? Well, that means we can reduce the degree by dividing this polynomial by s plus 1 because we know that s plus 1 is a factor, okay? So I'm going to save you the trouble here, uh, the division, because you can do it either the synthetic way or the long division way. No matter what you do, if you divide this polynomial, if you go ahead and divide this polynomial by any means, by s plus 1, then you're going to be getting a simpler polynomial, which I'm going to give you here. It's going to be s cubed minus s squared minus 57s minus 135. Now our 135 popped up again, which shouldn't be a surprise because this number is one. Okay. There's of course other ways to divide it. You can factor it by uh, factors of s plus one, uh, by adding, subtracting some terms and so on and so forth. Okay. So we were able to make it into a cubic equation and we're going to continue our process. So could 1 or negative 1 be a solution? 1 cannot be a solution, obviously, but could negative 1 be a solution again? We quickly check and we see that it doesn't work. So we're going to be looking for other factors of uh, 135. What numbers divide 135? First of all, notice that it's divisible by 3, it's divisible by 5 as primes, and I think those are the only primes that divide 135. So let's go ahead and check those, because why do we check primes? Because if, three is a, if 6 is a well, 6 can't be a divisor, but let's say 15 divides this number, right? And 15 could be a solution. Well, if 15 divides this number, then obviously 3 automatically divides. So let's go ahead and check 3 first. And uh, let's see if 3 is a possible solution. But uh, if you plug in 3 here, uh, you're going to notice that it's not going to be a solution. It's not going to work. Okay, s equals 3 does not work. So what we're going to do is the next thing we're going to check is s equals negative 3. And this is kind of like trial and error, but what you need to do is basically replace s with negative 3 here. If you do that, you're going to notice something. So let's go ahead and plug it in and let me show you real quick. Okay. All right. So that's a negative 3. Kind of messy. Negative 27. This will be a negative 29. Now, if you go ahead and multiply negative 57 by negative 3, you're going to be getting positive 171 minus 135. Now these two add up to negative 36. If you subtract it from this number, you get negative 171 and at the end you get zero. Success. So s equals negative 3 is a solution of this cubic equation.
okay? If you set it equal to zero, you'll see that negative three is a solution. So what does that mean? We're gonna go ahead and divide this cubic by s plus three, because if s equals negative three is a solution, then that means s plus three is a factor by factor theorem. So we're gonna go ahead and again, I'm gonna save you the trouble here, but if you go ahead and do it by any method, you're going to be getting a much nicer equation, which is gonna be the s squared minus four s minus 45, okay? So that's our quadratic, and we know how to solve quadratic equations. So we can just go ahead and solve this equation. Okay, so we've started with a quartic, guessed and checked one solution, and then did, it, did, it same, uh, did the same with cubic. Now we have a quadratic equation, which we can actually easily solve. And you're gonna notice that this is factorable, which is one of the nicer equations. And you need to find two factors um, whose sum is negative four, so they are negative nine and five. So we get s minus nine multiplied by s plus five, okay? Set it equal to zero, you get from here s equals nine and s equals negative five. Now, we're gonna put this all together because during this process, we were able to find other solutions of s. So let's go ahead and list them all. One of the solutions was a negative one, the other one was a negative three. And again, we found it by trial and error. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to make a list of both of these solutions. First being the negative one, the order doesn't really matter here, and the other one negative three, okay? Now let's go back to the original problem and see what it's asking for. The sum of the, uh, the, sum of the square roots of this number. I guess uh, we didn't, or I didn't mention that the roots would actually be real here, uh, but you can make that assumption. Uh, so which S value we're gonna be using? So, so basically what we're looking for is this one. And notice that all of these values are negative, except for this one, okay? So the only value that works in our case for reals is going to be nine. So the square root of P plus the square root of Q plus the square root of R is going to be nine for this equation. Obviously, there are other ways to solve this problem if you look at the equation carefully. So thank you for watching the video. Feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.